<laughs> oh man. Send me messages, emails. Hey Glendon, where are the stories? Where are the stories? Where are the stories, man? Just been working on some stuff. So uh, I'm going to drop a few stories for you in the future. This one is a little weird. It's a little crazy. And remember, I live in Atlanta, Georgia. That's all I'm going to say on that. I live in Atlanta, Georgia. Hey, this is Glendon Cameron. And be sure to download your free copy of my audiobook, The Hustler's Mindset, Pimping Your Mind for Success. This is part crazy Craigslist stories and storage auction stories. I bought this unit in one of my favorite places. It doesn't exist anymore. It used to be called, uh, what was it, Meridian Self Storage. It was the only place in on Virginia Avenue. They were bought out by Sugar, then became a Publix property or Publix. I forget, but I think it was Sugar, then it became Publix or something like that. Anyway, I bought this unit. It was downstairs. Downstairs stuff sometimes got a little mill duty, mill duty, yeah, mill duty <laughs> because it was really, really damp down there. So sometimes, you know, it was like a crapshoot, but it was all the way on the lower level. Big unit, 10 by 20, full from the Ruta to the Tuda. I bought it because I saw a Louis Vuitton vintage case, like right there. And I was like, that can't be what I think it is. And just go ahead and Google vintage Louis Vuitton suitcases, briefcases. You'll be amazed. And it was just right there. And I was like, I'm buying this just based on that. Uh, I was able to sell that sucker for 2800 bucks on uh, eBay. So I get the unit and the unit is extremely esoteric. It's very, very eclectic. It's uh, all over the place. Nothing makes sense. It's all really nice stuff. There's some Hermes stuff in there and just it was a mixture of modern and vintage stuff. There was like stuff from the 20s, which was grandmama stuff. And then there was, you know, modern stuff. And it was weird because there was all of these female clothes. I mean, it was vintage petticoats, vintage underwear. They had high heel button over boots and shoes. And that stuff is fantastic in certain areas of eBay back in the day. It was just nuts. Very, very good unit. I only paid about you know, was it six fifty for it. It was well worth that because, you know, the Louis Vuitton case, unit profit and everything else. Got to the point where I started putting some of the stuff on Craigslist. And uh, this guy comes in the first time. Comes into the warehouse. is looking at stuff. And my partner kind of hits me in the side with the elbow. It's like. I think we got somebody's stuff and I think they're here. I was like, what do you mean? No, no, not again, not again, not again. When that happens, it's just so awkward. It's just really, really awkward. So I just start watching the guy and he's definitely got that look like at any minute he's going to go, this is my shit. He never does. He just picks up stuff. He buys it, comes to the desk, checks out and we watch him and He's looking back and he's walking out and he's looking back and he's walking out. And we're just like, I don't know. I think we died some this time. I still have a lot of stuff that I'm selling on Craigslist. Like the stuff would have been OK for eBay, but it was damaged or it was something wrong. And, you know, we, we didn't want to take the chance. So we're just, you know, popping it out on Craigslist. But two weeks later, this woman comes in. Looking at the same stuff. And understand, there was literally thousands of pieces of articles. Clothing, uh, about 80, 90 pieces of furniture type stuff in the unit. So we had a lot of stuff. This is the unit that just kept giving and giving. You open up the box and just go, "Wee! it's Christmas. So this chick comes in. And my partner's sharp. 
And I'm sharp that day, too, because we were like, is that the guy that was here a few weeks ago? Because we're looking. And, you know, just to give you the visual, about 5'5", five, five, maybe 140 pounds. He was, he was a little guy, so he could pull the, the cross-dressing thing off very well. Because he, he just wasn't manly looking at all. No big feet, no big hands. So he, he could easily play that role. And just, you know, he came in and like pants and shirt and he comes in and dress in heels and boobs because my partner was always like those are some big old boobs he found and she's like watching him and everything and he's back over in that section and buys more stuff and comes over and uh he looks at us through his glasses and he drops his glasses down and he says you two know this is my shit don't you and at this point, <laughs> we're unabashed and we like, yeah, we know this used to be your shit, right? <laughs> and he said, true that, true that. Um, let me um, talk to you, too. I notice you still have a lot of stuff that used to be my shit. And I want it back. But... I am not financially solvent at the moment. Some things have happened. And it's almost like this British, Irish bro with a female lilt to it. It was crazy the way he was speaking or she was speaking or whatever you want to call it. So my partner was like, so what kind of deal are you going to strike up? And then he, she says, well, first of all, I'm very, very rude. My name's Bobby. Hi, Bobby. I'm Glendon. This is Francine. And we just sit there and talk, and it's like, well, I know some guys, and I know some gals that will like a lot of your stuff. If I uh, bring them here, and they make significant purchases, what would you think about letting me have the rest of my stuff or my former stuff? Not, I want to be my stuff again. And it was like, well, how many people are you talking? Bobby said, enough to blow your mind. And my partner said, okay, so what do you want us to do? Take your stuff off of the floor and hold it until you bring in your guys and gals. And Bobby said, yes, I can make that happen this weekend. And I was like, well, it's Saturday morning right now. And Bobby said, I know that. I just need to make a few phone calls. So I was like, you know, we're game. We're game. We're like, fine. We'll take your stuff down. No problem. We, you know, just put it in one of the floats, put all the stuff and just kind of move. Because about three floats worth of stuff left. So we sit there and we're looking at each other. And Bobby disappears. Then about an hour and a half later, drag queen walks in. A tall ass drag queen. <laughs> I wish I took pictures. Oh my God, I wish I took pictures. This would be the YouTube video of the year. This drag queen had to be about 6'6 six, six in heels. So this is like the minute bowl of drag queens. So, this one comes in, sashaying, goes over to the furniture section. Then, this other guy comes in, who's not in dr full dress, but definitely makeup and wearing a skirt. A lot of um, free form going on here. Then, three more come in, and then some gay guys come in, and... Next thing you know, it's, oh, honey, this is divine. This is so cute. Bobby just, oh, this is just a treasure trove of stuff. There must have been four drag queens and about 24, about 30 of them all together. And I'm not, I, you know what? Think what you like. They were funny as shit. They were hilarious. They were trying on stuff. People were looking at them. And I remember one of our regular ones, Saul, came in and he was just like, didn't know what to make of it. Right. And then the tall, minute, bold ones like, 
I want that one right there. And he's just like, uh, he starts pointing to his, I'm married, I'm married, I'm married, I'm married. And this just goes on for about four hours. On and on and on and on and on. So uh, as they were checking out and they were buying stuff, and uh, a few of them actually bought some large furniture items. I mean, seriously, it was killer weekend. Killer, killer, killer weekend. And um, at the end of the day, you know, we tallying up. And we didn't see Bobby. Then Bobby comes in just before we close and comes over, leans across the desk and says, how did we make out? And Francine was like, you can have your stuff. And Bobby puts her little hands together like, we, it worked, it worked, it worked. I'm so happy. And she says, they love y'all and they'll be back. I said, bring it on, baby. So certain weekends were extremely colorful in the warehouse. Didn't know what the hell was going to walk through the door. But uh, the, some of them became like some of the best customers ever. It was just like you just see them in the street. And it's like, hey, this guy's got this warehouse. And... <laughs> and, you know, Bobby would sometimes come in in a suit. Sometimes he'd come in. It was just. In the beginning, it was odd, but after a while, you become desensitized to it, and it's just like, oh, that's just Bobby. And then uh, one day, he just uh, stopped showing up, and uh, the crew stayed. They they couldn't just show up, and Francine was kind of like Francine was kind of fun to Bobby, and she didn't really want to ask. So I went over to one of them and I said, hey. Uh, Bobby okay and then they just kind of put their heads down and it's like no bad bad things bad things so apparently Bobby was on the it was in the hospice at the time that they came in and it's just like they didn't expect him to make it through the week so we went to visit Bobby it was a sad sad scene and uh you know a few days later he was gone so when you get into this type of business you never know who you may meet. You may meet a drag queen that can become your friend. All right? That's a story for you kids. I know you've been like looking for it. There's more. There's a lot more. Because, you know, if you've seen the videos, what and the reason why I held stuff back. But there'll be more. There'll be a lot more. And with that, this is Glendon Cameron, and I'll see you on the good side.